Is it better to buy freehold or 99-year leasehold? On this show, we debate this important question and establish the SRX 10-year rule for investing in Singapore property. Next on XTV with your host, Mark Loon. Good day, I'm Mark Loon. Back after two weeks of in-camp training with the Singapore Navy and I'm fresh and ready to go. This week, XTV will cover one of the big debates and evergreen questions in Singapore property. Freehold condominiums versus 99-year leasehold condominiums. The land tenure will impact the price you pay, your rental yield and your home's capital appreciation. For investment purposes, there are generally two types of tenures in Singapore, a 99-year leasehold as well as a freehold. Do note that I included a 999-year leasehold in the freehold category. A 99-year leasehold entitles the owner to own that land for 99 years, while a freehold has no limits. The reason for this controversy is that freehold properties such as the Clyde's view behind me are more expensive than comparable 99-year leasehold properties. SRX Property analyzed the difference in price between freehold and 99-year leasehold in third quarter of 2014. According to the SRX Property, buyers in core central region pay an average premium of 16.5% to purchase a freehold condo instead of a comparable 99-year leasehold. It's even more dramatic outside central region. There, it's 44.5% more expensive to buy a freehold condominium. So what are the advantages of freehold properties? Uh, freehold property basically uh, has a few uh, advantages. Uh, one very obvious advantage is because it's freehold. So whoever buys it, the investor or the buyer, does not have a time pressure. So they can actually take their time to sell it when the market is not good, like now. Uh, if the property is uh, over time, usually freehold property will appreciate uh, over long term because of scarcity of the, uh, the freehold property land in Singapore. Hi Phyllis. Hi Angela. Why do freehold condo fetch a higher price than 99 year leasehold? That's not always the case Angela. Sometimes it's possible to find a freehold that's selling less than a 99 leasehold. When that is the case, it might be a buying opportunity. According to SRX Property, on average, 99 year leasehold earns a premium of 25.8% in core central region and 18% outside core central region. So why does 99-year leasehold condo tend to outperform uh, freehold condos in terms of rental yield? Um, it doesn't matter to tenants whether the tenant is freehold or 99 lease. Therefore, for similar flats, freehold landlords must rent their units for the same price as that of 99 lease. However, the cost of freehold properties is more expensive than that of 99 leasehold. Gross rental yield is rent divided by price. So, if the rent is the same, but a freehold condo is more expensive to buy, the freehold will have a lower rent yield. So, what are the advantages of a leasehold property? Uh, generally, leasehold property uh, entry levels are cheaper. So, if people who are looking for a good entry level, leasehold property usually are more accessible uh, because per square foot are much cheaper compared to freehold. And if they are looking for investment, uh, leasehold 99 years are uh, generally more attractive because for the same rental uh, uh, rates, uh, the rental yield is much better for the leasehold property. When it comes to capital appreciation, it is a mixed bag on which tenure prevails. In the last year, 99-year leasehold owners came out ahead in core central region, earning 12.1% annualized return versus 10.9% for freehold owners over a 10-year period. In outside core central, freehold owners prevailed. So let's go to the SRX analyzer and see the capital appreciation for the top three freehold and 99-year leasehold condos during the height of the cooling measures and see how they compare. I go to the property tracker and select first quarter 2013 because that is when the TDSR or restrictions on the total debt servicing ratio came into effect. I found that the freehold condo with the third highest capital appreciation is Flamingo Valley with an average annualized return of 21.41%. In second place is Soho at Farrer with an annualized return of 26.4%. The top freehold condo for capital appreciation since the TDSR is Astoria at an annual return of 41.67%. When I look at the SRX property tracker for 99-year leasehold condos, 
I don't find as great a variance in return as I did with Freehold. The 99-year leasehold condo with the third highest capital appreciation is Stratum, with an average annualised return of 22.97%, which is slightly higher than third-place finisher Flamingo Valley in the freehold category. In second place is Rosewood Suites, with an annualised return of 23.44%. This is slightly less than Soho at Farrer, returned in the freehold category. The top 99-year leasehold condo for capital appreciation since the TDSR is Park Rosewood, with an annual return of 24.71%. This is significantly less than High Flyer Astoria. So in summary, SRX property data allows us to establish the land tenure rule for investing in Singapore property. The rule states that, in general, freehold condominiums are more expensive than 99-year leasehold condominiums and they tend to underperform in gross rental yield. When it comes to capital appreciation, that is a mixed bag. The land tenure rule means that it may not be worth paying a large premium for a freehold condominium if you don't plan to live in the home for a long period of time. The rule also suggests that if you are a landlord, go 99-year leasehold. And that's it for today's show. Please join us next week for the SRX HDB report. Also, don't forget to subscribe to XTV on our new homepage for srx.com.sg. This is Mark Loon on behalf of XTV and SRX Property. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.